Hey guys, today's video is about what's new in Affinity Designer version 2.1. That's the new update occurred some days ago in May 2023 for um, the new Affinity Designer version 2. So that's now version 2.1. And there we have some important new features I want to show you. So I will only show you the important ones I think you need to know. So this video is not too long. And the first feature we're looking at is the live mess raster mesh warp filter you can now um, use inside Affinity Designer before you could only use it in Affinity Photo. So to do so, you need, of course, some um, picture and you need to click on it. You need to go to personas and change your persona to the pixel persona from the designer persona by clicking on this little icon right here. And then the next step is um, moving your cursor to the layer section and then going to new live filter layer and click on mesh warp. And this filter is live which means you can adjust it at any time. So you won't um, change the picture forever. You can um, readjust and reset. I will show you this um, after the first impressions from this new filter. So you can now, for example, click right here to add a new um, node and then move it or simply move the outside nodes and um, adjust the curves. Um, like you maybe already know it from Affinity Photo, you can now use this filter inside Affinity Designer, which is really cool. And I already said that this is a live filter. So for example, if we do some other things and we um, want to change this, we can simply click right here, double click on this little icon. And we can also click on reset to reset this, um, this filter we added. And we can click on done and we are done. And we have our um, um, uh, starting image back. That's because it's a live filter. And the next new important feature inside Affinity Designer version 2.1 is the adjusted dashed lines, as you can already see right here. So we're deleting this one and starting with a new rectangle, going to the designer persona again, going with the rectangle and creating a rectangle. Now we don't need any filling, so we will make this transparent and we are giving the stroke a white color. And now we can go on stroke and as um, it was before, we can go right here to dashed line. And the thing that changed is that you have now um, some new settings to adjust these dashed lines. So for example, we can add uh, one right here and we have the standard dash line. So I already changed the cap. So that's the normal cap you have. You can go with this one or with this one. I will go with this one. And then for example, you can enter some zeros to simply change the look. So if we enter a one right here now again, we have this look. If we enter a zero right here, we have the basic look again. So we can play around a little bit um, with this one, but keep in mind that you now have new settings to adjust these dashed lines to look a little bit different and cooler than before. And the next important new feature is the snapping warp nodes. So um, in Affinity Designer version two, you could already use the warp feature. So you can click on a text, you can go right here. Of course, you need to be in the designer persona, click on warp and you can go on perspective, for example, and you could move these things around. And what's new in Affinity Designer version 2.1 is that now you are able to snap those so you are more um, um, accurate when um, creating some new perspectives or warps. For example, in this case, we can adjust to the middle of our um, of our artboard or to the bottom of our text right here. Um, but it also depends on what um, settings you have in your snapping right here. And you, of course, need to have snapping activated. Um, so it looks like this right here. And that way you can um, create those warps more accurate and more um, and better. And the next feature I want to show you which is a new tool inside Affinity Designer version 2.1 is the Vector Float Fill tool. So um, that's something similar to the um, Shape Builder tool, but with filling a color. So for example, we are going right here and we need to select all of the um, objects first. So this rectangle, this ellipse and this um, tier right here. And with the Shape Builder you find right here, you already had Shape Builder in 
2.1 we could um, create new objects from the intersections right here from all of the our objects also from the ones um, from the background so this one right here which was empty and now we have a new feature which is called the vector flood fill you find right here and with this feature you have the same um, yeah starting point like with the shape builder tool so you have all of the um, shapes um, built out of the intersections but you can now use this um, tool to fill these uh, intersections with a color you want to so if we go to swatches we can change the color to for example this tone and we can click right here to change this color or right here to change this color or also in those empty spots like we already could do with the shape builder tool we can click right here to change this color and that's the new tool inside Affinity Designer version 2.1 and there's also one cool new thing I want to show you um, without having an extra artboard for it that's um, the possibility to now rename your artboards by simply double clicking right here so first um, in Affinity Designer 2 you, ne uh, you needed to double click right here in the layers tab to rename your artboard for example artboard 2 um, and now it also displays right here and with Affinity Designer version 2.1 you can now simply double click right here on the artboard um, on, your, um, on your screen and you can change the name to for example um, Affinity if you want to and then it will also change the name in the layers and right here in the artboard um, tab right here. And yeah, that's going to do for today's video. If you enjoyed watching, don't forget to like and subscribe. And hopefully see you in the next video. And bye.